Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Not at all. It's not good. Put a crow. Right. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So we'll go into uh, the next thing is code compliance process and action items. And again, you know, I understand this just got to us last, in the last week. And you may or may not have gotten through it over the weekend. Um, as I, as I was reading it, I'm understanding the first section was in the table of contents, um, A through H, and then action items A through B. And the second part are the details of those contents. Um, as I went through, I wrote down a number of uh, questions. And as Scott and I were talking briefly before the meeting here, now, obviously, we do not. This is an informational, so we're not expecting answers tonight to these questions, and these may not be all the questions. But we need to to say what are we asking staff to do? What information we need to do to be able to approve these action steps? So my intent on all this is ask the questions, find out what we know and what we don't know. And then if staff not to go back and say, okay, here's what we believe the answer to that question is. Um, because there's a there's a number of things because other than Dan, we don't all have the codes and codes. And so some of these things will jump out as because we don't know what the codes are, we need more information. That makes sense. And is it how am I recording? That still needs to be It's recording. So that being said, table of contents being the first section on the page, top page one. Um, so decisions and actions need them, needed for Rum River consultants to start code compliance. So when we retained Rum River consulting, uh, we moved code compliance from the planner uh, to Rum River. Code compliance has been in a <clears throat> offline mode for a while. I mean, probably been two years since we updated our least a year. But a lot of stuff on the code compliance spreadsheet is two years old. Some of it is 22 years old. Things are going back from the code we're seeing. So there will be some discussion what we do about this. That's not on our topic. Tonight, but we want to make sure that if Rum River is going to take over a portion of the code compliance, we understand what the process would be, what the potential cost would be, the internal process, and then the third party process. And as I understand it, Rum River would only be doing those things that would be in our zoning ordinances. So, code issues there. Anything in our administrative, and stop me when I'm wrong, anything in our administrative section of our codes or the nuisance sections in our codes, any other? It says administrative nuisance, or other is it? They, they will be doing those. They will be doing those as well? Yes, they, they will likely not be doing zoning violations. They will be handling um, code complaints for excessive vehicles, excessive number of chickens, um, exotic animals, um, those types of complaints. However, I will say they're open to doing what now then needs. So um, just a little bit more background. We met with Rum River Consultants and Cindy Nash last week to go over um, high level, what needs to be done. Um, so Rummer can do what now then needs to be done. However, now then needs to give them direction. 
here's the codes you want me to enforce. Here's how to enforce it. Here's the letters that have to be sent to the residents. Here's when we want you to do a drive-by to confirm a violation, uh, et cetera. So that's in essence what this list is, what now that needs to determine this action steps are quote compliance. So remember can start and close things. So who will do these zoning items? So that's part of the discussion. So um, Rum River was going through our existing code, and I think Cindy had as well. I noticed that there are a lot of things in the zoning section that wouldn't typically be in a zoning ordinance. Um, lighting, animal shelter, so those were three of the examples of things that are currently now then zoning ordinance that really shouldn't be in a zoning ordinance. They should be in a general or a nuisance section. So um, they would like direction and approval if we want them to go through, if we want Cindy to go through line by line and say, these are my recommendations for items to be removed from zoning uh, and hold a public hearing, she wants approval from the council to do that at her hourly wage before she just starts going and making suggestions. Same with Rum River, they can help propose once those items are out of zoning, here's how we would draft them to be in your general or your nuisance section. Um, but they want approval as well to say, yes, so you go first, review zoning, give us your recommendations, then we'll pass it off to the murder to help draft the new proposed code. Do we have a nuisance section or is it all under zoning right now? Yeah, the nuisance section. Right so that we did, but I was like, maybe the right. but they're in different areas of where they should be located according to what we have been, have been shared with us. So, so the three examples we, we don't know how many items might be. Uh, this animal landing junk areas, we have a clue as to how many. And the, the cursory look through this between collaborative planning and Rum River. We have any clues to how many types of things might be shifting categories? From their initial review, it seems like at least five, but I don't think they've done a line by line deep dive into it. So, how do they determine you know, junkyards? Would seem to be a code. How do they determine what's code nuisance and in general administratively? Um, that I don't know. My understanding from our brief conversation was zoning should really be when you are almost building the property. Setbacks are X. Um, the um, when you're building the property, ongoing things like having an animal, um, they're saying it is not, but I don't know the exact. But don't we have those ordinances under like building codes and ordinances? And then we have then we have ordinances regarding properties and and ordinances regarding different things and so uh, that's the thing that is interesting it's like because how I'm curious is the same thing is how are they separating that because of how will they separate it and will it come under the same things that we have as far as enforcement how will they be enforcing that or will you know all those questions if we're going to take them out where are they going to go and how we do that when we have to sit down and that's all that kind of too. It's a second. So we have our zoning stuff that talks about districts and then concessionary starts our small modification, etc. And then it gets into moving dwellings, mining and excavating, use of dynamite, certificate of occupancy. And then it does get into junkyards, animals, exterior storage. 
but then it goes right back to development standards for commercial and, and housing standards and lighting regulations. So they're kind of all. So does it just mean that it needs to be kind of cleaned up and separated? Separated, right. Yeah. Yes, and the one example that was brought up is anything that's in your zoning ordinance can be grandfathered in. So the example that is just an example was if there were suddenly a lot of complaints that a bar had music going until 2 a.m. Um, and there isn't an ordinance that says you can't play music on an external speaker that doesn't exist in the code today. So and then we can install an ordinance that said you can't play music on an external speaker after 11 p.m. If that were in the zoning ordinance, then that bar when receiving all the complaints is grandfathered in and they can play music as loud as they want whenever they want because zoning ordinances are grandfathered in. If it's in the general nuisance ordinance, that's affected immediately for all, like, all products. That was the example given. I'm now reminding you again. So if, if we don't have a zoning ordinance that restricts that, it's grandfathered in. If you were to have that ordinance be in zoning, because that bar was built before the ordinance went into effect April 1st, 2024, they're grandfathered in. Okay, so you're saying, let's say now we're, we're starting to get complaints about a lot of music. Yeah. Yes. And we decide to put something in the zoning rather than the nuisance section. Correct. Now, or grandfathered, which, yeah. which makes sense, right? It's like all of a sudden we decide we don't like vinyl clad homes. Right. You're not going to make everybody go back and play the workhouse, right? Right. right. New houses going forward would need to have that type right. of standard. So if so we were to sell the bar, then it would be a plan of any owners. But it's so, like to deal. I'm going to try and avoid getting into the weeds. It's kind of easy to do. <laughs> but what I thought I recalled maybe our attorney at one point saying nuisance issues are hard to enforce. Maybe it was a hard sheriff's deputy. I'll do so, put it and take some of these things either out or add them because we don't feel like <laughs> we don't have some of these things we really should have. My music. I don't have anything currently. It says your neighbors can't keep the rock band one to three more. Sometimes my neighbors do. Um, we add that to a nuisance. How do we how do we enforce that? In Rum River had suggested adding it to general instead of nuisance, and that might be the reason why general ordinances are easier to enforce potentially than nuisance ordinances. So, so one of the things that I'm, I'm hoping to accomplish today is we can give some directive to say where do we need more information. But right now, I'm hearing general category, nuisance category, <coughs> and zoning. Are there any other categories besides that that we're putting these ordinances into? That's not that has not been discussed for Rum River to take on open plans. No. Okay, this so one cross over to the other. They should. How do you decide which one it is? I just I'm, didn't know if we already had some that crossed over. Well, I know it sounds like they're all, or a lot of them are in this one. So, one of the first questions I would have is how many sections of the code are we using? Right now, we have the general nuisance and zoning, but we have had a discussion saying how many categories are we looking for? Right now, the proposal is just to remove non zoning items from zoning and either creating a general category, because there isn't a general category right now, or updating the nuisance category. Uh, there is number Letter C on the list is to review all current nuisances so that the nuisance section does need review as well. The one followed immediately was uh, our Navin's nuisance says if you have two or more unlicensed vehicle, that's a code violation. Um, Rome River said they believe that's been changed at a state level. That can't be a violation just because 
there's a car that doesn't have a valid uh, registration that's no longer able to be something that can be complained about as a nuisance. So the thought was if on their initial review, they already found something that just off the top of their head, they thought, oh, pretty sure that that can't be done anymore. Nobody's sure when the last time the nuisances were reviewed to see are they relevant and are they still up to safe statutes? Well, me of an IUP says any vehicle has to be licensed and operable, which will improve the conditions for IUPs in these years. If we do it as an IUP as opposed to part of the general or nuisance code, that we have a that's still allowed. I'm not familiar with the IUP process. Uh, All right, so back to item A. Remove all non zoning items from the zoning section. We have three examples here that somebody came up with. Yes, remember. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so we have no, no idea how many more there might be. Correct. So the proposal is to allow to have somebody review in detail the current zoning ordinances for the city of Navarre to make recommendations of items to be removed from the zoning ordinances. And the proposal is rather than the city of Navarre? For city of Nash. Or for city of Navarre. So, so rather than like 95 or 100 dollars an hour? Cindy's not her. I'd say one hundred. Well, I'm just like, so how long is it going to take? What's it going to cost? To be yeah, to right. Fine. Yeah, so my question is how much time and money do we anticipate this game? I mean, we're just writing a blank check right now. Yeah, I mean, right now, because it's like detail report. What you know, what the rate is. Well, what you know, what the rate is, what you know, how much it takes. I'm not saying that. Can we find that out ahead of time? I mean, can we? That's my question. Mr. May, I don't know how the arrangements are. Um, would it be something where we could say we would like you to do a two hour review of the zoning ordinances and call out anything you know is not typically in the zoning ordinance? I don't, I don't know. Well, let me ask you a question. When, in speaking with them, and they were looking at this, obviously, what was it? The conversation there. So, and they're noticing all this. Did they give you any indication as to if they wanted to do this, how long it would take them or anything? Yep. Okay, they and they've already looked at it, obviously, because they were able to pick a few out. Well, River has. I don't know the extent of how much Cindy has reviewed it. I I believe that was something that she and I think I heard the name um, the attorney looked over the zoning ordinances. So some of some of this may hopefully have already started. Our meeting was cut short. So this was a discussion, discussion with Rum River. And the city. And the city. Okay. And mm -hmm. so look at our city code there. How much of that is falls under zoning? Chapter just chapter one. Yeah. So all those other consider channel. One through ten minus the reserves seven and eight. Right now, my understanding is none of these are considered general because they all have specific topics. So I believe the proposal is taking something like chapter seven, which is just the word reserve, and potentially making that into a general code. Okay, so. What would happen to these that are chapters one through six right now? Would they be gone through to say we should pull them out of this? But I'm trying to I'm trying to picture how how big this might be. So we have one through six, a couple of reserve spots for things that are going to come up in the future, and then and then nine and ten and eleven. Eleven is the zone. So. 
the proposal to still 311 or they're going to go to all? All of them. 11 to start and the nuisances. I believe this was the one. Okay, so then you go back down for a minute. You've got zoning ordinance under 11, you've got subdivision ordinance under 10, you have building regulations. Are building regulations and subdivision ordinances already in your zone? Not that. I don't. Right, but that's what I'm saying. Well, we're looking at stuff. stuff. It's like. Right. That's what I mean. <laughs> My thought would be. Cindy should be, should be, or should have reviewed 9, 10, and 11, since all of those would be what she's going to be working with. Well, would she be building, would she be working with building regulations? I mean, I can understand that would not work with As a planner, I can see subdivision and zoning. What's in building regulations? <laughs> is that planner there? The building code is from the Oh, I'm sorry, Rome no. River's doing our septics. The sewage and lot waste time yeah. be Rome River as well. So potentially nine is just Rome River. Mm -hmm. I and, and so so nine would be Rome River. Because mm -hmm. I'm looking at everything on there, that's what they said they would do when we engage them. Okay. So Post construction that? stormwater management, because previously the planner would go do that because maybe because our building official was not locally. Housed and Rum River said we can do that. We should be able to close out two uh, occupancy so the planner didn't have to come back. Um, well, this looks like it. Be so, so let me go back to that nine. If this is all Rum River, is this should this be part of the zone? I'm trying to figure out the structure here. What category would this fall under? It's not nuisance. It's not general. It's specific to building. I don't think those are the three categories that there should be. Those are just the three that need to be addressed for them to take on the code. This, I think, should be addressed, reviewed for compliance, but not as part of code compliance. As part of them being the building department. Okay, so so let me back up a little bit here. We're saying in order for them to pick up code compliance, we've been sitting on code compliance for years with limited activity and limited enforcement. City isn't burning down yet. Should we look at getting this all straightened out? Overall, before we task them with code compliance, because I would want to make sure that these six sections are tight and understandable to our residents. And, and I was looking in here, you're talking about um, making things searchable. You know, if we have something, if we have things here, this would apply to people. That are looking to build out there. I would like this to be searchable before I'm um, too much website. inviting people to complain. Yeah. I, I agree. That website, you've been doing a great job by the way the website. But I agree. I mean, it's very, very, very difficult on our ordinances to go through every single thing. And that should be now that we've got the dog pilot, that should be easy. Yeah. <laughs> if I can if you can just go building ordinances, boom. But do we want to hold up getting Rum River in place to be able to do these until all these ordinances are done? I mean, there's ordinances in here, in chapter four, you're taking a look at chapter seven, to like chapter four is seven point energy uh, franchise fee, illicit discharge, park rules, and regulations. Maybe. They're telling us these are the ones that they would like to spend the time on to be able to get up and running. 
and in, in the right place in our ordinances so they can continue on with the company. So you're saying they just want to go through them to see what, like, take you just said chapter four. So they want to look in chapter four and go, this isn't us, this is this, this isn't us, this is this. Or it just stays on the ordinance in chapter four. What, what, I'm, what I'm hearing though is, is they're looking to identify things that they can then hold people accountable on their building homes. So, yes. so we're going to create a complaint form here and we're going to identify how often we um, update files. So we're we're going to create a complaint box and say every week you're going to we're going to have to find and eventually we're going to tell this to attorney that we can't even get a bill from you. Yeah. I, I'm just I don't know if things are concerning enough right now that we want to increase that workload of paying hundred dollars an hour to somebody to enforce complaints that we're going to open up saying now more people can now you have searchable codes and. And you can go and say, my neighbors aren't complying with these codes, and I have a little, I can quickly check a box and put this in the system, and somebody on staff's going to review it, and they're going to say, yeah, that's a violation. They're going to hand it over to Ron River. Ron River's going to start. I was looking at it a different way. I was looking at it when I'm looking for a greenhouse, for instance, and I have to go in and I want to hit greenhouse and see what I'm supposed to do. And that's, and that's what I'm saying. We can get that part there first, but. Well, reading the documents we have here, this is um, creating a checkbox for common complaints, a sanctuary spreadsheet. How can residents submit complaints? <laughs> Call up each side, form online, and in person. That's a Pandora's box. So now we make it searchable, and you can start going, yeah, I like what my neighbor's doing. I just went through the easily searched file and found out that complaint. I read the documents. I want to clean up the document before, <laughs> the doc before we offer it. That's what we're recommending. Right? <laughs> well, our, our action item tonight is complaint forms and so so this this is what Brown River needs before they can start enforcing codes before they will go out and take pictures from the right of way, send a notice of potential code violation before they start sending citation letters that say you violated this code, we're gonna charge you $200 every X amount of days. That's, this needs to be done before they can do that. So, so I, let, me, let me ask this to the council. Is that a primary concern for the council right now? We haven't been doing much of it, we have this, Ancient log that we have there that every once in a while, the would go out and pick a few tires and, and charge a few dollars for quite a few dollars. Um, and Rum River is it's just started with us two weeks ago. And my concern is we have this new building official that's now also going to be responsible for code compliance, which is. Pretty loose and goosey right now because we haven't cleaned up the, the codes. And we're gonna say same guy, same firm is coming out of here and working with your building is coming out of here and slapping you with fines mm -hmm. for some complaint that somebody because there's still be a complaint driven, and somebody's gonna say, Hey, I can read it pretty easily now. I can search the codes and have an online document to complain. And and as, as I read this, the, the proposal would be. Um, somebody on the staff will have to log a complaint in the internal log if it's in person or by phone. C sign, I'm assuming that would go to log automatically. <laughs> no, but it would send the form back to people. Okay, so somebody in the city is going to have to log this into an internal log. Somebody in the city is going to have to review the complaint for the validity against our now and code, hopefully, it's searching. Um, if the complaint is not a violation of the city code, whatever this code ends up being, somebody in the city has to notify the complainant. If the complaint is a violation of the city code, then it gets told to the city administrator. And the city administrator either contacts the resident or drives by for a visual confirmation. And there again, 
one of the problems we've had is nobody came out and looked to see if I really had this violation. So if you call me up and say, hey, you might have a violation, they're going to say, I don't think I do this. So somebody's going to have to come up here and see this. And right now we're saying, Scott's going to run on the city responding to all these complaints. If Scott goes out there and says it is a violation, then he sends it to the Rum River and we get into this process of site visit, notice sent out by Rum River, citation, citation letter sent, I'm going to sue by Rum River, administrative notice letter sent out by Rum River, attorney involvement in abatement by the city, which is a cost by us that we can only get back by assessing a fee to the property. I can say that I like the fact that things go over Scott's desk. I think it created something when you all went, I, I wasn't on council when that happened, but I was in the audience and I watched it because we had had a problem in the past and it's complaint driven and everything right now, but it comes to your desk and you get to decide, is this something that I see as a complaint or sometimes you get to just talk to someone and they don't even know that it was, but they've just moved on to the property. So it it's reaching, it's coming over and it's making a bridge with someone already. Whereas if we change it and it becomes more of that, you've got then the neighbor against neighbor kind of thing that could create it and you're you're taking out of the equation and some in a little bit is there. And I don't like that. That's not the intent. So everything will go through the administrator. And then the administrator will decide, yes, this is a valid complaint. It needs the letter sent and fines of set. But you also have the couch potatoes that now can do this. The couch potatoes that sit there and they, they complain because they can, rather than making a phone call and actually having to talk to them. We lose the, we lose the personal aspect of it. People walk into the office. I've been there myself, where people will come in, drive in and make a complaint. That's a lot different than if they can just do it on the form. They can do it on the form today. So nothing is proposed. Right. To be and that's what I'm saying. Right. But I'm saying that that's what we're looking at is that um, that that's going to go ahead. And that's, that's bringing our city to a point that it's less, it's less of a small yeah. city kind of ask. So I really made her able just to talk with Andrew. Right. Exactly. So I guess great. my question is, Jeff brought up some valid concerns. So what is the do nothing path? What changes from today? Everything rolls through Scott. And he's got to do the research, understand if it's a viable complaint, and go all the way. So do we think that today's approach is unmanageable for the next Six months, ten months, twelve months, or how some period of time this I tend to agree we've got a brand new planner and a brand new um code team. But it also a building. It feels like the last thing we should do is you know pour a little gasoline in on what was a pretty good fire that we just managed to put out. <laughs> so Scott, do you feel you are overburdened with anything right now with that? Um, the, the change, I guess the question I was asked is what will change if I deem it so I can't go on the property. I can go by from the road. I can take a look. If they're not contacting me, they're not getting back to me. I don't have the next step. Typically, that would get handed off and we start through the process. If we're not going to have a we're doing code compliance, I can do all that. Then where do we go? Well, we're going to appoint a code compliance officer in Jan or but then after that. And that person is no longer around. No one is there now. We have a complaint process in place now. Like, is there inject? Is there issues of use in the existing complaint and it's just handled in house at this point in time? What does that mean in in house? Does it mean staff? Are you handling it? <laughs> oh, there hasn't been a whole lot from here. Um, the ones we've been getting are road complaints, which we all have a lot of different things. 
or somebody will call in again, ask about chickens or something like that, or have them uh, speak on a dog again. And so it's just been able to explain. I'm just saying, explain the way to the president. I'm just saying if we get hats at a feet, if we're going to try to clean up that list at all, or if we decide we're just going to like that list, clean that again and sit down to the CL and John. Um, and we start fresh. Um, that that's one approach, but I'm just asking: are, is the expectation of the council then for me to um, write letters and start citing people internally? So I haven't been doing that at this point. If if it got to the point where it needed to be code compliance, then it was going to be at that time. And then my understanding was code compliance once it gets past me was going to be going to the room. When we approached from River to talk about it, they said these are the things that we'd like to get cleaned up. This is how we've done it in other cities. This is what it happened in others. And this is what our process says we want to do this. So that was the meeting we had last week. And I wanted to bring in council and say, and there's a lot more that Jennifer still has to talk about um, as far as how, how often, at what frequency does the council want to see it? Do they, do they, how, what's the dollar amount for the citation? Do we max it out? Do we continue to let it ride if they're not getting back to us? And and in talking to Rum River, they're all doing our co compliance there in the area that nearby that we come on and some of these very quickly and, and put people in the process, which right now would be on Google Docs, but by the end of the year will be in Facebook. So that nobody's attracting me through their website. So they say by the end of the year it'll be on Facebook. That's what we're told. January 2025 is the goal. So back to Jason's point and my point. Uh, if we continue as it currently is, and, and we know from a law that we have right? Very little will get cleaned up, if anything. And, and at certain points where certain repeat violators, uh, we would assess a fine against them in the fall to go on the taxes. Well, throughout the year, they need being assessed with the point that we right there, but at the end, yes, we can that. So, yeah, again, we come to this kind of what is what is the cost of the city doing something? What we'd be assessing then is the cost of the city involved. The whole point of how much we charge and how often we charge a daily we have two weeks, whatever that is, was uh, to cover our expenses primarily. And we also need to try to get people in compliance. We try to get compliance, but basically when it came down to it, when we decided how much to assess, it generally was. What the cost is? What did we put into this realistically? And that's what we should be assessing. Um, if we're trying to be coercive and work with us, we're going to try to do everything it costs us and then a little bit more as a penalty. Uh, or making sure that we've covered all of the costs is to improve any attorney's fees, any other professional fees in addition to whatever the office is for. And we, we need to make sure we have something there that's realistic to say how often should be, be, be assessed. What are they? How often should be assessed? To me, it's, it's a question that we need research and say what's the consequence? Because we don't want we don't want to be vindictive to people and we don't want to be charging them more and it's costing us, we don't be charging them less than costs. But you know, to me, as, as I look at this list and notes I have on here, when I determine the order and time frame for each action step, we don't have a documentation of our current process. We don't have any type of flowchart current and proposed. So right now, somebody does a site visit. Somebody sends out a notice of potential code violation. Is this site visit the one that's down here in HE? Contact city administration, contacts residents, and drive by for visual confirmation? Or is this something subsequent to that that Rum River then goes out and does their own site visit at 
hundred dollars now. I mean, is is my understanding is one river has one price. They don't have some subordinate that was out there because it's it's they're hundred dollars an hour. Yeah, and drive down here and maybe do a site visit in fifteen or thirty minutes, but but who does the site visit? And then notice a potential code violation. Is this something that rather than paying a hundred dollars an hour, it's the letter can be sent out from the office? It's, it's going to be a fairly standard template with fill in the blank of the code violation. But the rest of it is a boilerplate that Liz used to send out. Um, potential code violation, if not getting a response, then you know, this was what Liz used to call a nicey nice letter. If you're not getting a response, then a citation letter goes out. Is there a consequence to the citation letter? Is there a consequence, you know, if we're not getting a response to the citation letter, there's an administrative notice letter. So it sounds like a, a, a notice letter is more severe than a citation letter. Because a citation typically has a cost to it. Your site or something. Administrative notice letter, what is the difference between a citation letter? So in my expectation, we would have examples of these as they currently exist. So I think the currently exist part is where it gets difficult. Um, I worked with Liz during her last week here and she sent me what what she had. So I have examples of those letters that she had sent out to a particular listener. So there isn't like a template, but I have a letter of a citation that went out to Mr. John. So I have examples of three letters that were sent out to residents but there isn't really a template. I didn't receive anything that said, I send out the nice and nice letter. If I don't hear back from them 30 days later, I send the notice letter. If I don't hear back from them, I assess a fine 15 days later. There, there wasn't anything concrete that was happening. So it's hard, it's hard for me to capture current process. And from what I've heard, there wasn't one standard concrete process. This is done on this day, 15 days later, this is done, 20 days later, this is done, which is that why is in code. There's one dash five dash three is our process in which chapter. In which chapter? Chapter one, section five, dash three. And you can't look in the big one, you have to look in the big one. You have to look in the amended or it's not in the full one because we amended it. We put in the letter shall be sent out and time to be set up to 15 day calendar days from the date of the letter to do all that for a site inspection and all that. Kind of stuff. Administrative notice that the violator has 15 days to correct or abate the code violation. Something like that. So that's chapter or section, chapter one, section five, what? Dash one dash five dash three. <laughs> so so this is what the city code. Yeah. But you're looking at the full chapter one, not the amended one. Where is the amended one? In city, should be in city code. Um, but isn't that what you're really receiving there? There's there's chapter one that was written, then chapter one was amended twice. We amended the policy and procedure in 2018. Mm -hmm. So there's an amended ordinance. <laughs> Where are you kind of? Stash. It's in the big books of the book. The that was passed and signed by Jeff, Mayor Jeff Pilon. That is part of the problem. I, it, I'm it not doesn't... denying it, but I'm just saying we, they, we need to keep our code current. Yes. Right. So, Absolutely. And so let me ask, what you're meaning there, Dan? How does that differ than what Genevieve's got on the screen? Chapter one, or it starts out saying that there's an administrative notice. Wait. There's, there's, there's a notice. notification of a potential city code violation. So there's one by right. three procedure A. Notification of potential city code violations. That's in the zero. Okay, so far we're we're in the same boat. Yes. Okay, these extra administrative notice. 
And next would be an administrator notice. All right, and that's one A and B. And two administrative notice three in categories. And then citation. Yeah. So okay, so that potentially is has been updated then from what I have. I don't know when it was codified on. Well, this is great. I didn't, I have not read through the code line by line. There's no searchable oh. <laughs> feature. Right. That's so. the problem. It's just, yeah. Very hard. But that, is, but that is another part of the problem. This is the code that's on the website. And then looking through the internal shared drives, this is what I've found, but I don't, there isn't a, a copy of this is the codified ordinances effective right now. It's kind of all over the place. And I think that's right. one and of the other, things that needs to And I know happen. there's other changes that have, yes. haven't been codified yet. Yes. That's one of the next questions. I don't know. Okay, let, let's not get off that. That's, yeah, another round. So, so then citation next would be administrative notice. Keep, keep scrolling there, please. So on citation. Responding to a citation slash payment. Appeal for hearing officer. Where is this administrative notice of that? How many warnings do we get that? I mean, that seems like it's what some contacts are. And there's the money attached to every time, but usually you get to the middle of the. Okay, so I'm looking here. So everything follows down to administrative notice and determining. So we're an officer. Okay, so that's the all right, so we have notice of potential code violation. We have F, item B, C in there. We do not have D, E, or F, nor do we say anything about A cycles. So it'd be good to take what we currently have. So, so my question is, is yes. again, is this something that we, Okay. So in this case, you have to one section five one five three site visit is part of the listed potential program. But that being said, well, my my concern is how much of this makes sense to outsource to a third party that historically hasn't had the residence of now that is their primary concern. As good as Rum River is, they have 15 cities. You know how many cities they are representing right now? They have a lot of cities they're representing. So how much of this can we clean up? How much of this needs to be done at the hundred or hundred fifty dollar an hour rate? Oh, and then how would they have a problem that we just discovered? By reading through it on that one. But it's still not up to date. Yes, he's saying that is the same as he's got. That it is the same? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a minus. Yeah. But, but, but again, this only came up the end of last week. Yeah. So Genevieve hasn't been assigned to go through this like she has been the policy. Right. This came up. When did when was the meeting with Ron River and Labyrinth? Uh Tuesday evening before that. So last Tuesday evening. This is not even a week. So we're looking at a process, but we haven't we had a chance to go through what exists. And, and and my my note on here is what's the current process? Has anybody looked at that? Because we're we're being asked to come up with something new, but we already have something that we can build on. Was it if I may because it says Here's here's the fine and here's the time. Wasn't there a wasn't there a meeting at one point in time between 2017 and 18 that there was a meeting that Frank had that went through all the planners involved for code enforcement? I think we remember something like that. Just two people there. Yeah. <laughs> 
there. It feels like we're in that rabbit hole that we tried so hard. Yeah, to get right. So, okay. like, what do we think of the next steps? Right. Right. You said we don't really want to pay 130 bucks an hour to go do this. It feels like, do we assign Genevieve, hey, review chapter one, chapter nine, 10, 11, and start there? Or do we say status quo for six months and let's see how this new team actually works with a few of our residents to see if if we went plus or minus on the uh, resident uh, scorecard in terms of how they interact with uh, the city planner and a new inspector slash code team. And at the same time, we see if, if things go up, where Bob is done. Well, I mean, his limitation is they came in, they come in, and unless we change something with we give him the authorization to perform site inspections. He can't do anything. He can make, make the call. He can make the call. It, it, that would be the same as it is today. Right. Um, but we don't have anybody that can say, somebody calls and <laughs> says, they've got, they got a jump here. They got a jump here, and it's not to code. And you can't pull it, you can't see them drive fast, and Google Earth is outdated. What do you do? I bet you a GS is basically yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. typically to have a mechanic of this or you're talking about handling. Yeah. yeah. Right. So the drummers are saying they won't take it right now until this entire procedure is done. I don't know if they necessarily said they wouldn't take it, but they wanted to be able to put things in proper alignment in our code. They're, they were trying to help us by moving things in the right areas. And they said they'd be willing to work with us to put this, you know, step by step in place in conjunction with what Genevieve, what we already have right now that we utilize from Liz to some extent, right? That Liz right. Yeah, exactly. And now, you know, what we're looking at right here, um, they were willing to come on board and help us put this together so that there was some continuity in the process and we could do that. But it's a service that we We should have a paint by numbers on this. Do that all right. No, we do that. I have a question here. The currently <laughs> this would all be on Google Docs, but based on coming on the baseline, which is one of those proprietary products. January 2025. Who currently enters it in the Google box? Nobody. That's how Drummer does their code compliance. Okay, so they're they're not the city's entering code compliance for are not on the basis of this. Correct. So, um, so if we push the button that into the complaint form. When you push the button today, this appears. Uh -huh. um, so you have to fill it up and fill it out and sort of bring it in. So one of the options is to move it to a Google Doc so that it is more fillable. It can require an email address. So we at least know that we have a valid email address for them. Would also then be in this format so that they could choose. These are the most common complaints that existed for 2023. Mm -hmm. So that they could select as opposed to just typing out my neighbor's house is yellow and I don't like it. We would give them common ordinances. And then they could fill this out. It would go back into info at now that so everybody would have access to it. And then it would create this cute little chart in real time so that we can see the most common uh, <laughs> violations. And then it does create a spreadsheet as well. So if that's the case, and somebody fills us out, we, we people have to identify and so we do that. Is this subject to data practices? Can somebody come in and say, I want to see the file that can make on it? I do not. That's a good question. If this, if this is the electronic spreadsheet form that's spreadsheet, it's in our department. You know, public information. 
the questions we ask Canada resident and they don't identify who can blame, they can get it out. No, they can't. We get the complaint, but we don't get the first question. Yeah, this is what I'm trying to file. But what we had the paper form, we pulled out. They couldn't do it. They didn't request to get that enough. Isn't that, isn't that exactly what you're saying? It's in a manual over, manual versus digital format. I don't think they could. So they, they can't right. get the data request to get a formal complaint and know who it is, can they? Not differently. What we, when I worked at Newby before, when most complaints come through, we redact the name and the address and all that of the person, but they can actually see what we live on. Yeah. The verbiage of so even if they ask for so even if they ask for a data request, all that would be redacted. They still couldn't see who, who did it, right? Well, I think the question, if I understand the mayor's question, is could they put in a data request for that whole spreadsheet? That that means right now the complaint form that comes in is not part of the data request. Bob's been very clear with me that we can redact the person's name out of there. They can just uh, give what the verbiage was. So even if they have a formal data request, we don't have to get the name at this point. That's correct. Yeah. If they did a formal data request for a Google Doc, which is a completely different thing. Which I don't know the answer to that. And I think that's what Mayor is not ready to say. You can get the whole document that wants that. And the name. I, I would imagine it would fall no different than the that, but it's something I can certainly go over. It would be no different than the complaint form that comes through where I redacted now. If they were asked for that sheet, I mean, that can be done. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So, so you know, you're able to complain about it. Yeah. Is there is there a concern that it comes in electronically versus a handwritten piece of paper? I think it's because the, the concern is going to be will be you may have twenty different twenty different things on that spreadsheet, right? Right. But I think I'm I'm trying to trying to parse out is the concern if we use it as Google Docs, then we're held to different standards of getting a there's a few there's a few different things. One is yes, we would be held to different standards. Would someone be able to get somebody's name? Two, the other thing would be yes, if you there's so much on there so you've got a lot to fill out. And the third is you're you're not having to bring it in and not having to kind of be that neighbor that's a you know going to go face someone kind of there, they saw. but just to clarify they're not we're not changing at all how complaints are received so, so well, that that part is not so they can do it well, why can't we why can't we just pull out this insert realm river mm -hmm. and follow the same process for following day Wayne comes in scott that's it Scott does an initial check, gets to a certain point, Rum River, and needs to go check this out for this code. And it is this code and this code only. It's not pre rated on everything in the code book. Go out and check this, come back and report. We have a citation process and a timeline that's, that's up there. And if there is a viable, legitimate complaint, that can't be resolved. We follow today's uh, uh, citation process. And it's at least, because what we had before, I think we're, some people were frustrated is it wasn't necessarily always consistent. And we didn't necessarily know when someone filed a complaint, the complaint has got to be, I don't like the writing track because it's, a nuisance violation of noise, that's the issue. And it's not when I want to look at the writing track. But by the way, there's 16 votes out here in a container, and there's an offense. We got to get back is what's like, what is you told us the writing track, we went out there, they don't even own motorcycles or ATVs. Not an issue next. And we start there. That would be my thought. And then we see how this thing goes. If we really need to get to the next level of having having Rome River go through all of our ordinances and rearrange them all, I think we get a better feel for what that cost is. But I don't know what I'm ready just to say, here's 20 hours, go after it. It's going to 
spend some money. I think it's Scott gains the process today to a certain point. He's going to hand it off the number which says, go check for this ordinance. I, this is what I want you to check. Come back and report out. If it's a violation, here's the citation process and timeline that's in our policies. Follow that. Because gentlemen just stated a little bit ago for run order to continue, they need to. This is what they want. Yeah. Okay. Like, <laughs> and what like, they're telling okay. you to do right. is say, like, here is the code that we have today. I totally agree. It may not be to what we see in other cities, but we're not ready to spend 25, 30 hours. We want to. You want to dance a little bit before we're well, how, well, how about you have to get uh, to know your job before you do it? You have to get we, to know we your We start job. by defining what is going on. Now we'll be able to send our ordinances. Um, let's at least capture that process flow so that everybody, because our previous plan was, um, in theory, was inconsistent with the process flow. Yeah, potentially. So yeah. Let's, let's first. Take baby steps and say, let's define the process as it currently exists if we want to apply it. Um, and then we can say, okay, how does this fit with what we can do versus what we pay somebody hundred thousand dollars to do? Can we send out that first time? We so let's take a look at what is the current process and who should be doing it. And then Ron River came back to us and say, is that a is want to change versus we really can't do this for you until you change this. So I'm, I'm not hearing a clear consensus on that. They're saying we need to do these first. That's what they would like. I mean, there are certain things that they will have to have. If they're going to send, on, send a letter on how these we have, they have to have that letter to So sure. that's that makes what, sense. Yeah, like, and they have and to we need to understand. These are how often they're assessed. And it seems like we already have now that we know such a final. Now that we have that, if we agree that so we have to agree, are we really going to do this uh, find them every 15 days or 14 days? Because we got some really big fines. We have to see what's effective and what we're going to do because we weren't following the feedback. Yeah. But if you stick from we're going to guess it could be more consistently aggressive. Yes. They, they, they follow our they're very follow. Yeah, they're so we have, we have to understand the consequences of that because previous planner that may not have been following that said, Yeah, I visited every six weeks or six months, and and here's they're making a reasonable effort, so I might slide or whatever. Or, you know, we had that question we did the assessments last year. Why is this one 4,800 and this one's 200? Yeah. And that's the only time I visited them. But and and right. some, yeah. I thought she was willing to work with and others weren't. I'm sorry. And some she was willing to work with them. It was it's that she was. So. And everybody got treated the same. Yeah. But if we start treating everybody the same, we could see that a lot of high points. So I, I think we should take a look and say what would be the consequence if people did respond. Um so before we're, we're coming up on eight o'clock here, there's I think we need to give certain direction to the next steps. Um, but there was uh, there were some ordinances item D on our first page here. 2023 city ordinances, we need to confirm whether they've been codified and moved into the code. The MS4 THC, cannabis moratorium, lawful gambling extent home occupations, and maybe others. Mm -hmm. uh, they appear to be on the web, but we don't know if they're currently in code. Can we talk to us about that? Yes. And and again, I'm not familiar with the process. All I know is they are literally physically on the website uh, in a separate section than the city code. So I don't know if these belong in the code. Yes. So I don't believe that has happened. I cannot find a copy of the code that I'm Please. So this is amending chapter yes. four and nine for twenty three. Okay. But I don't know how far back we haven't done all the codification on things. The last codification I can reasonably see is from eighteen, but I don't know. I haven't. Right. I haven't gone again. I haven't gone 
through any of this. So, so Shirley, when you came to work that day in the office, you were looking at, you know, once you got up on the balconies. Now she's retired. And we all got an extra desk. Uh, yes, that was clean up. And it was, it was, I was doing the same thing. I, things were not where they were supposed to be. They, a lot of things were not, um, there were council actions that were done that were never followed through with. Um, there was, um, I mean, it was fine. It was like, I was excited when I actually found something. I was like, oh, it's really good. We'd actually, that's what it was supposed to be. So, yeah. So, so, I guess, <laughs> In this, we need we need a paint by numbers. It says when an ordinance is passed by the, the council, ordinance amending chapters four and nine, we need to know who is going to do what by when. So it sounds like this got done, but nobody was responsible for or identified as who now updates our city code. Yeah. And, and we're literally make sure that our electronic and hard copies are current. I would, I would assume if we're updating our code, there would be a copy to all the commissioners as well. People are going to enforce codes in our <laughs> now. Well, it hasn't been done in years. So action item out of D, would be what is the process to take things that the, the council has approved and make sure they're in the, the codified and moved to code. And then, and then what you were saying, Nana, we should probably go back and look at 2022, 2021 yeah. to see what else needs to be codified. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Jeff and Jason don't remember it being done since 2019. Well, see, that's the problem. Like, once we get to this, once we get to this, we don't. Right? <laughs> I think that's what Shani found is the assumption is that that passed by the council. Right. But it wasn't. Some of them weren't. We're, we're signed off. Great. Right. We're signed off. Yeah. So it was kind of like. I used to get that all the time. I, I just sit in a meeting and then you get in front of me and I said, This is six years old. Oh, yeah, we saw us. Never got signed. Um, so that's the challenge that I have is I'm trying to look through them electronically and search on them. And I know things have been passed that are So I. I would I would like to hold off on the electronic complaint form until we have some stability in this process. And, and then I'm assuming we can take what is this letters and make them template. Yeah. Okay, so that can have no be the rural such benefits if they're going to sure. Yeah. Uh, find the process for D. I would take things that are approved by the council, codify them, and move them to code. Mm -hmm. uh, specifically, these that are here and anything else going back to 2018, we need that put on this list. Um, the an action item would be to take the existing letters and what we identify in section 5153 and make those boilerplates to plug in. <clears throat> Or if something does come up, we have some other terminology that we can do. One of the things we had said when when code compliance spreadsheet got hung up is let's focus on health and safety issues. If there's a violation that is safety related or health related, this person set their system generator as well. That's something we have to respond to. Uh, which is all different than saying well, we're going to have kind of chickens. Right. So if we can keep it to health and safety at this point, well, no one ever stabilizes as a building officials and, and collaborative stabilizes as a planner and we identify then what these processes are. Uh, because if we're going to talk about violations, again, my list, it depends on severity of the violation. You're going to find somebody the same as a health and safety issue versus too many chicks. 
And that that ordinance has to be redone anyway because it doesn't make sense. You can go both ways. You can have 85 tickets on five years. I'm not kidding. I was like, or you can have. Well, that's not big, those checks. Yeah, that's right, 100. 100. 100. So it was, if you could read it in different ways. Huh? Only numerous. Because it's more than three acres. Yeah. It doesn't say. Yeah. So is one of the action items for somebody to at least uh, read the existing uh, nuisances and and call out things like I I read it I honestly can't tell if I can have a chicken like to just read it I don't know about them I think we're just gonna go with health and safety right I mean isn't that or well I I think safety. I think that for the the complaint at this point because again that law has been sitting idle for a while was updated occasionally to assess some. I think that yes, in health and safety, we should be responding. But to Genevieve's point, I think that somebody needs to go through and say, this doesn't make sense, or why is this where it is? Well, the next but thing they is want to pay somebody $100 an hour, $130 an hour, or $25 or $35 an hour. Well, the nice thing, though, is it's when you are going through something and you go, this doesn't make sense, then that can go. Maybe council needs to go over. The chicken heart man. <laughs> Just the list of, oh, okay, flame that one. Having that somebody in the way that do this all the time, so they had a discussion with Dan just saying, I was a resident, I could figure out what Well, these are the things that I get called on, and that's why I know about the chicken heart because it doesn't make sense. But if you have more than three acres, you should be not the best, right? So, so let me ask the question is so we can, can wrap up here. Does <laughs> Does this make sense to have somebody internally do this versus the higher price external? It's not associated with our city. I do think there are certain things that we should easily be able to you know, take the first path. Council, council and Scott's more than willing to, to get assistance from the council on. There's definitely several that we could go through and yes. combine and consolidate and make somewhat reasonable changes to clean up some of stuff. Before we engage higher-priced professionals, we could kind of as far as we could internally and I'll help us go beyond it. It was just after, it would just theoretically be rewording it and making addendums and then passing it to the council and then codifying it. Yeah, and sure it's it. Right. And then it's done. So yeah. But at least we're all working at the same time. I think at least formatting wise, just having it be add documents instead of right now I found at least 16 separate PDFs. Yeah. And and it, 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 they all they put it in a binder and left in the binder. And there was no structure around when they got put in and and modified and you know, so. Right. So that your last item, additional action items, okay, code format to combine in one document. Yeah, PDFs and make it standard format. Yes, and I don't know how these are PDFs or the PDFs from 2018, so we can convert them so that they're editable, but I haven't been able to find any. Do we have the doc? Do we have the word docs? No. No. I, I have not been able to find them. <laughs> So One that's, of the big that's plus that I have to write. Somebody had those Word docs that didn't close the book. I don't know if we got all the Word docs back. We got PDFs. So that's that's what I'm saying. Like physically, we just we need to convert these PDFs into something that. I have a Adobe, right? Yes. Full Adobe license. Yeah. Confident. Yeah. I'm pretty sure in Adobe they're saying make this a Word doc. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. so we need to we take all. We need to take the 18, convert them all, combine them into one, add bookmarks, add table of contents, add and just somebody needs to just do that. So you have, <laughs> you have two weeks left this week and one more week. Oh, we can have. How much of this, how much of this is kind of going to go direct? How much of this do you think you can do in a week and a half? If this was, 
I don't know, Scott, you mentioned in your last update that you talked about the projects before the recess mm -hmm. and, and then what the expectations were after the recess. Mm -hmm. Does this understanding, we need to get this cleaned up before we hope that from River and Beach, does this fit with what you had planned for Genevieve for the next week and a half? Mm -hmm. So okay. what, what it needs to be, we can move it up. What, what would be jeopardized if you plan the next week and a half if she had to do this? I don't know if I need to tell me, but there are things that we do with all the stuff that we'll let her update that um, her and I went through that weren't quite across the finish line yet. Some of the ones were the uh, or chart, right? That was one of the things that we wanted to get across, make sure that the signs were set. But there were there were certain ones that we had violated on that were that I wanted to to make sure that we got across the finish line before she left. So when she came back that we could start cleaning. Um, those are a lot of that stuff was probably some smaller stuff that we could probably do. Uh, but this has quickly moved to the top of the right. So okay, can we, we ask we can to shift things to be able to reevaluate whether the quick things that could be done mm -hmm. and how much of this could be done for sure in the next week and a half. Genevieve, when are you in the office next week? Okay. I'll be in this Thursday and then next Tuesday and Thursday. Would the council be okay if I sat in with Genevieve next week just to kind of look at some things so I can, while she's gone, I might be able to then take some of this project on? Just to look at the ordinances. Well, I'm trying to have this converted to. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I, I mean, there's, there's a, there's a, 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 because I'll be in doing things like signing checks and so on. I mean, just to make sure that if there's going to be three people on site and disposed of it, there could be three council members either on site or <laughs> you guys can do a shiny. If there before three o'clock, it will not be a problem. I will not do that. Right. And if anything, I can work with as long as there's a, if there's a computer available at the office that I can get on and try to work some stuff to, to, to figure that out. And or if there are times when somebody may probably call somebody in the office. You need Adobe. With an Adobe like so I want to have a computer or I don't I don't have did you pass it on already? Yes. We don't have Adobe licenses for everybody, but it's really expensive. Oh, right, yeah. But do you have another computer right now? Where are they? Where are the two right now? This All right, then you move back here for the next two weeks. Please, after that, go. But Natalie can talk about getting a better license. Natalie's leaving in the morning. <laughs> Oh, she wouldn't. I, I would no, just, just work with the lead to. Can you remind me what license was? Pass one. You guys remember? We'll figure it out. Okay. Otherwise, let me find. Let me look and see if I can find a non Adobe Adobe Word Poker that doesn't cost anything. And then I can do that. Again. So, what we did find with that is when we do that conversion, sometimes the whole formatting goes away. So, yeah, you know, a good way, and, and that might be part of this is we might have to shortcut some of it mm -hmm. just to get it into a work doc. Mm -hmm. Is there more important? You have to give you a Adobe Pro almost to get you the right when you need it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and we can. It wasn't just the entry level. No, right. Yeah. So, okay. I. Well, this yeah. is a task. There's. This, this is the most here in the Yeah, they're wrong. I mean, like, we spent hours trying to figure out what I mean, we just had all those stuff since it sent out and scanned, right? Yeah. So, I mean, there's got to be a company that can take all this, convert it even in the right format, and send it back in the city. Yeah. Well, so, then we have to know, we just have to find what to send them. So, yeah, somebody, so we just have to find what to send them. But oh. we have the 2023 yeah. ordinances, so and we just can't take the box like we did. It's like 2022 it. that we need to find. All right, so let's let's wrap up the action items here. It's quarter after more struggles in the office.
So, so for right now, just because I do all of this going back to you know, Round River and Cindy Nash, there are no action needed from either of them at this time. Well, I think the question is, are they able to take the code compliance first after, or if we're, or if we're going to do it in-house from A to Z, that's one thing, or or is Scott going to look at it so far and then go, okay, yep, it's a problem, and then hand it that is, is Rome Rome willing to take it from there? I think that's what we have to add. That's what we need to hand that off. Yeah. yeah. Right. If we needed to hand that off to them, can you hand it off to them with the codes the way they are? Because right now, in the letters that were being sent out, well, those all at once was cut and pasted out of the ordinance to you put it in the letter. This is what you're not in compliance with, and then you're being sent out. I sure. don't know the answer, but we can say the hard part about that is. That's what got us in trouble because we didn't target it to what the complaint was. We just sent the whole ordinance in it. Yeah. And what are you charging me? And, and we put the attorney's name on the bottom of it. So it was, yeah, that's what that's so the template have to be created that will state exactly what their yeah. issue is, is what it is. But all of our river would be combined, not all of the fence would be our code so they could cut and paste out of that we needed to put them into it either the format that we have internally or their format or a combination. Mm -hmm. So right now ISMD is a thumb I mean I think I feel like it's kind of full come full circle. Originally we had talked about what we need for Robert to take it on. We're saying we do want them to take it on once we've done our internal part. However, we want them to take it on with the code as it is today. Right. right. And create a template. So then the only other thing are the template. again, I think we need to create the template because that's what we found with the previous planner is what she was wanting to do was, was more aggressive and okay. and having talked with Ron River. They would tend to be more aggressive too. It's it's very black and white. Okay. So I think we need to, to develop the templates. So this is what the council, this is the tone that we want to communicate. And then um confirming that what is in the code right now works for timeline. Looks like it's every 15 days between steps, mm -hmm. and then the fees as they exist today. Yeah. And then I, I'm going to say that based on the inconsistent inconsistency we had in the past and the anticipated consistency of our mother, you're going to have some really big bills pretty quick and people don't jump. And you have found people that don't jump. And I think we need to take a look at what the examples will be based on history. How quickly do we make making thousands of dollars? And there was a proposed cap because in the past it wasn't consistent. You can easily hit two thousand dollars pretty quickly. So one of the proposals was to cap it at two thousand per year for a single violation. And there again, to me, a violation of health and safety versus chickens, two thousand dollars worth of chicken versus two thousand dollars worth of health and safety issue. Is not consistent. It's total thousand five hundred and seven. I think you're sad and feel ten years and then put it on. So immediately we're going to try and confirm over the past five mm -hmm. years in our city ordinances that have been kind of by the moved code and find what that process is going forward so we don't get the situation again where we we approve them and that's Number one. Um, the, the boilerplate for our section 5153 as it exists today. Um, and I think here in the assessment, we have to have that discussion what that looks like. I don't think we can do that in the next two so I think the other thing would be to uh, update the code format so we standardize the, the document. So we were going to, we're going to standardize the code format, make sure all our 
ordinances from the past five years are codified and in the code. And then work on more of those from the letters if you need them. And clean up the easy ones from the list that you asked, Scott. The easy things off the agenda's list that you said we Oh, of oh, uh, the to do list. So does that sound like we can have <coughs> you know, probably more than we can have? <laughs> Again, first thing is like, let's make sure our ordinances that have been kind of right ready yeah. or that have been passed are kind of right now. That we standardize the format so that at least we can all be looking at the same thing and we have questions in the future. The format of all the documents, the codes. Yeah, as, yeah. as they sit currently. Yep, gotcha. <clears throat> and then uh, whatever can be done in the next week and have cleaning up the things that you had in your list already mm -hmm. and then looking at it in a horrible place. Yep. Mm -hmm. There's something else that we talked about tonight that anybody else thought was. In the next week and a half. And within that, Shannon, if you're available, yeah, you know, time. Staff, and then you're available, we can see what you can do and see what we can keep going in this in our period of time. Yeah. On the fees, it's broken out into class A is $50 and class B is $200. A says animal violations outlined in sections three and four of the city code. What does that mean? Where's sections three and four? <laughs> and? <laughs> yeah, that might not. <laughs> There's so a Bring it up again. Now. So I'm, I'm here. It says here. class A, 50, animal violations. Oh, okay. We're talking animal violations. Yeah. Sections three and four. Under. Yeah. Check them. Sorry. Yeah. 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 90% sure it's talking about chapter 11 and zoning ordinance because that's where the animal stuff is in section four. What's in three? It says four. Yeah, it's four. It's supposed to be page 11, one to but it's not the So they're all the animal stuff. Um, Section three is <clears throat> district. Should we start talking about animals under the under a part? Be my guess. So that I'm reading section three. You're right. Yeah. Section four has the animals in it. Right, but under the rural residential agriculture, would it be talking about animals? Why not? It wasn't going to be that. See. So, and I'm boarding in the meeting to this all that kind of stuff. You like to do it? So, animal boarding violations are the same as chicken violations? They're in different sections. Yeah, I'm saying, oh, this says yeah. three and four. So. If you have an unlicensed uh, kennel and you got 300 dogs, it's $50 fine. Mm -hmm. Yes. You're seeing animals underneath 11 right? Jim? Yeah. That was my question. Oh, and uh, under, under 11. Under the RRA part, is there stuff referring to, to animals as well? And the kind of is. You see, the wildlife sanctuary is not initially used for provider. RRA has any and all forms of agriculture. I farm is the niche. The IEP is for boarding, which is under section three. Who so came up with this enforcement information? Oh, that is the last thing. I something. I was like, oh, I have a problem. I have a problem. 
So that was one of the items that I just wanted to make sure <laughs> if it needed to be reviewed and updated, that that's on the right because that then comes down. So, as an administrator here, I'd like to the administrator here the cup. And professionals have to be there, there and that was part of it. If we're going to send it to a new vendor, we're going to start actually sending out letters every 15 days for the first time and charging these fees. Just, I think it bears reviewing that this is what we want to do before we start <clears throat> doing it very regularly. Yeah, very to every resident. Hmm? No, actually, it's Yeah, but some of them are as well. Okay. Right. So, okay. I'm still not seeing your dog stuff on the deep. Hey, right. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Did this one, can I ask you a This is again coming from not being super educated in this. But I kind of hear a couple different things. One is we want it all updated and current and into one document. We kind of want code enforcement, but not really. So if somebody makes a complaint, then we might do something and we might not. I, if we can't find what we're looking for right here in the last five minutes, how do we expect our residents to? That's, that's, that's my point. That's the point. That's, that's, what we're struck. Right. that's, the that's point. my point. So we clean it up. Maybe Round River can go find it, but we're not going to be able to back up. We're not going to kind of concede, well, our professionals found that. But we're going to be able to sit here when we assess people saying, Round River nailed you with this, but I don't know what the key is. Right. I think they need to clean But they, they'd only be nicking people for any, any of our code compliance, so they would have to find it in our code compliance and put it in the letter before they send it out. Right, so would it wouldn't be nice to have ours cleaned up so that someone was getting a letter, they could go find it too. No, yeah, it's also kind of like what, yeah, yeah. kind of like what I was saying when I went through it, like I would get the moss. I brought up the greenhouse thing because I don't know <laughs> cost of greenhouse. Oh, and I'm trying to search the code because they can't find it and they're right. looking through it. And they're just like, I don't understand. I just need to know. And so I, I had a conversation with Scott. I was looking through it. And you'd look through something and you'd think you'd find something. So then you'd send that. I'm like, hey, check out this. Well, then they check it out and I'd read through it. I'm like, no, that's not it. Forget it. That's not the right one. And you know, and they were looking too. So it wasn't like it wasn't, it wasn't doing what they wanted to do. It was just difficult to find it. So one of my things was with the website. Great job, by the way, because I can write down something that comes. It's the same kind of thing with those colors. If I can write greenhouses, then boom, it comes up. And then I can look and see at least what it says. Oh, so, only like that. I know. I'm just saying that that would be nice. Well, that's my angle is to get it. Sorry, that means it's buying so everything. Oh, yeah. I want to know. <laughs> and, and there are searchable features which are great. We're also developing frequently asked questions, um, which I think is going to be really great. And it's going to have a top thing. So Sue and Chris are writing on the top questions that are getting on a regular basis. How many chickens can I have? What are the fence setbacks? Because we shouldn't have to turn those questions out to our consultants if it's a black and white. It's not black and white though. That's the, the chicken part. But but a fence. Are the but, but again, if these were the frequently asked questions, we should make it. Right. Yeah, that's the right. Point. Because it's not black and white for us. You know, our consultants have to figure it out. Hundred percent. And you know, interpret it. Yeah. So let's look at the frequently asked questions. Make sure it's understandable. Yep. And and repeatable, and start there, and then say, okay, both for planning and for building and for code, all uh, three of them, we should have frequently asked questions <laughs> that the staff can answer. If they get a call, we know how many buildings you can have on a property this size. You don't have to just keep giving out the planners hold at 130 bucks an hour. They say, oh, you got 10 acres, go at it. You got five, it's this. If you got under five, it's this. I think the other thing you know, that we struggle with is the consistency. So and you know we have farm sites that have one set of rules 
neighborhoods that have maybe a different set of rules. And so you're trying to combine all that, and we've had code enforcement that has wild variability. So, and again, based on how easy it is to find this, we don't really have a great what is the or what is today's process? And if it's every 15 days that we're going to be starting to charge people for multiple hundreds of dollars for multiple violations, that might be a pause because that's going to cascade somewhere we probably don't want to go. So I I think it's like you said, let's figure out what we say we do today. We probably don't do that well today. But what is the process? What is that ticker and then roll through? Uh, all right, somebody has chickens or five votes. What is that actually going to look like? And is that what we want? Because if you tell them go and they go and this thing blows up, then we get to, uh, we all get to feel that love. So mostly she Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, same 30. All right, so you got enough to keep you busy for a week and a half? <laughs> Uh, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. We're on it. Most forget about it all for a week. So I got a motion to reserve. We have a second. We have adjourned at uh, 8 20 p.m. Mm -hmm.